Tech, tech, technology. Self-driving cars, those are a pretty obvious technology, but what about self-driving semis? Oh my God, they're going to change everything. Trust me, trust me. Self-driving cars are already showing to be safer than humans, which is, you know, great. They've got their eyes on the road. They've got a 360-degree view. They're never sleepy. They're never distracted. They don't text. They don't daydream. They don't fall asleep. It's awesome. And best of all, to my knowledge, self-driving vehicles have yet to be drunk on the road. No drunk, no high. No risk of amphetamines, unlike current uh, truck drivers. So, what's the real benefit? Sure, just replacing them, we can see that. But if it costs 200 grand to replace a driver who only costs 30 grand, it's not worth it. Now, the big thing is, they can run full steam 24-7. Imagine that. A world where a single truck with a single operator can run every hour of every day stopping only for food and fuel. And really, why would he even have to stop for food? He knows he's got a 48-hour shift. Just pack 48 hours worth of lunch. Have a little kitchen in there. Who cares? You don't have to sit at the wheel. Just go back and make a sandwich, man. Since 1939, operators have only been allowed to keep their trucks on the road a, a maximum, a federal legal maximum of 11 hours per day. So that means instead of traveling 627 miles a day, figuring 11 hours at 60 miles an hour with 5% of the time for refueling, the same cargo could travel more than twice the distance, 1,368 miles. So that saves 54% from the cost of the driver of the big rig while reducing the transit time by essentially half. The 2,908 miles from New York to San Francisco could easily be traveled in less than three days. You could send a semi and still beat three-day air travel. Fraction of the price. You could move a whole semi-trailer coast to coast with one driver. Unbelievable. No more trucks idling overnight. Think about that. You ever seen those truck stops where endless semis are just sitting there burning fuel? A refrigerated truck simply cannot turn its engine off. It just can't. A semi can only run 11 hours a day, meaning there are 13 hours that this truck must remain moving, uh, must remain running without moving an inch. So an idling truck consumes about uh, a gallon per hour, meaning that for those 13 hours, it's 52 bucks in diesel fuel being burnt. If a rig is only in use four days a day, uh, four days a week, that's a savings of almost eleven grand a year. So, according to data from over a decade ago, transportation.anl.gov/pdfs/ta/373.pdf, idling trucks use as much as two billion gallons of fuel per year. At four dollars a gallon, low in many states, but right now it's a little high. That means $8 billion in wasted fuel. So by getting rid of that waste, not only would it narrowly trim the cost of your transportation for whatever goods, produce, electronics, clothing, it would also um, reduce the demand for fuel, lowering your price at the pump. And basically it would save everybody less greenhouse gases, all of it. So what about the other benefit of uh, semi-trucks that are autonomous? Reduced drag from smarter caravans. So no driver is going to be pushing the speed limit if he's a robot. Truck drivers love to push the limit. If you've ever been on the open highway, you know if it says truck 60, car 70, the trucks are going 70, 75 because they want to cover ground as quickly as possible. That increases fuel consumption, that decreases safety, and it would become a thing of the past. Uh, let's see. They can file into close, tight, smart caravans to reduce their drag even further. And that's assuming we have one driver for each car, for each semi, when in fact, you could have one driver for a caravan of 5 to 10. 
I don't know why you would need one driver in all 10 of them. And he can sleep when he's not working. He can cook when he's not working. Basically, he's just an attendant, which is much safer. Why not take a nap? And if there's an issue, a siren goes off and the caravan just safely pulls to the side of the road. Massively reduced carbon emissions. Oh, yes. When a truck sit, sits idle, it creates 22.38 pounds of CO2 emissions per gallon, which means per hour, which means 291 pounds of CO2 per night of idling. Come on. If we can just eliminate that tomorrow, why wouldn't we? A rig working just four days a week will generate over 30 tons of CO2 emissions in a single year, half of which we can erase. So the real losers in this, and there are real losers, well, the truck stops might lose a bit because they sell showers and they sell food and they, you know, the real losers, let's face it, they're going to be the lot lizards. They normally feast on the flesh of lonely truckers for odd fistfuls of nickels and even odder dozens of dimes at a time. They're going to be out of work because I'm pretty sure the robo drivers really don't need 45 year old dragon vaginas to snack on, especially when they've got, you know, a Wi Fi connection or a hotspot connection through their phone with unlimited porn. And they can Skype their wives. Holy smokes. So yeah, the future's right around the corner. It's coming quick. And it's a good thing. I'm sorry to the truck drivers who are going to lose work. But this is for the best. This is for everyone. This will reduce transit costs. This will reduce transit time. This will increase safety. It's just plain better. For more on why this is happening, whether you like it or not, check out CGP's, uh, CGP Gray's segment, Humans Need Not Apply. It'll, uh, it'll scare the hell out of you. That's it for technology.